What's well, crack lacking gangsters? If you guys have been coding for a while, you've probably heard of Git and GitHub, but it's a little bit confusing getting started. So I created this mini series to get started with Git and GitHub, so let's get to it. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is just going to be a quick mini series on how to use Git as well as GitHub. Um, to create repositories, do version control, which basically means anytime we update our project, we'll create a version for that. So then if we sleepwalk or if we're like daydreaming or something, and we end up coding and ruining everything in our project, we can go back in time to a different version that we saved with Git and reload up our project, save everything, and continue on from there. Uh, GitHub will allow us to work with others. A lot of people have been asking me, you know, you mentioned that you can work with a team. How do you do that? GitHub's going to allow you guys to work on the same repository to develop, uh, you know, one project together. So the first thing that we need to do is git git. This is going to be for Mac. I'll create another tutorial for Windows if I can get my Windows computer up and running again. Uh, it's been a while since I used it, so hopefully I'll get a Windows version out as well. This is for Mac. All you need to do is just go to this website here, git-scm.com forward slash download forward slash Mac, and it should automatically download Git for you. Uh, so just go ahead and save that somewhere, unzip it, uh, or run it, and install Git on your system. What that's going to allow us to do is use some git commands within terminal. So the next thing that we want to do is I'm just going to go to a different screen here and open up our terminal. Go ahead and do that. It should be either a quick search here or it's under your applications folder, utilities, and then terminal here as well. So just go ahead and open up your terminal window and the first thing that we want to do is test out if we have git. So we're just going to type git in there and if you guys get a list of the git commands as you can see here you've got it installed properly. If you don't, you want to make sure you extract that, you know, restart your computer or whatever it tells you to do and get git installed on your system. This might get confusing if I keep using git for everything. But anyways, this means that it's installed in your system and we can use git commands. So the first thing we want to do is locate the directory that we're going to save our project. This will be a repo, a repository a git repository this is where we're going to do all of our version control as you can see here I'm within my folder Travis Cornelius this is the graphical view down here of where I am right now I'm gonna create a new directory called github so you just do mkdir and that's make directory and then whatever directory name you want it to be so I'm gonna say github hit enter and now I'm gonna go into that uh, folder that I just created so you do that with cd uh, github. These are just standard Linux commands, um, but now we're within our github folder. You can do ls to check what is in that folder since we just created it. There's nothing in there. It's blank. Nada. All right, and so with the graphical view down here, I'm just going to go to that new folder I created, github, and we're in the same location for those of you that like to view things graphically. In order to create a git project, we need to initialize this location as a git project. Maybe I want to create one more folder, so I'm going to say make directory, and we're going to create a Chuck Norris fan site. Um, so I'm just going to say make directory Chuck Norris, and here we are again. Uh, we want to go into that directory within our command prompt, or uh, I'm sorry, within terminal, and then Chuck Norris as well. And now we need to tell this folder that it is a git repository so we need to initialize git within this directory and you just do that with a git command and then initialize which is init just hit enter and now we have a git repository within our project and if you don't see anything graphically don't worry it might just be because you have your hidden folders not showing this is the way I have my Mac set up so I can see hidden folders um, but as long as you don't have any errors up here, it looks good. It says it initialized an empty git repository for us. So now that we have everything set up, let's try and create something within this project and save it. And when you're working with git, commit is pretty much like save. So each time you save or each time you commit to your project, it's going to keep a version of that 
uh, within your Git folder and you'll be able to go back in time, like I said, to change things around if you need to, if you messed up and you need to go back in time where everything was safe and happy, um, for example, right at the beginning. So what we're going to do first is create a new folder or a new file and you can do this with any text editor if you guys have Sublime. Uh, you can do that as well and create an index file. We're just going to do a simple like PHP uh, file that just says echo. Whoops, uh, Chuck. Okay, so just something real simple here, nothing fancy. Uh, just a simple file that we're going to save within this location. Um, I'm using TextEd or TextMate. You guys can use whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can use Notepad plus plus or whatever. I'm going to go into my folder that I just set up, GitHub, Chuck Norris, and save this as index.php. So now we have a new index.php file within our Git folder. Our Git repository won't know that this is here until we save or until we commit to the changes that we've made within our project or Chuck Norris repository. So what we can always do is check the status of our Git repository by using the command git status. Hit enter and as you can see it gives us some information here. We're on the master branch which we'll learn about what that is later. Uh, we we're on the initial commit which again we're still setting up our project so we haven't actually committed anything. We're on our very first time of saving um, and right here untracked files we have our index.php file. So what untracked means is git is not controlling this file yet. It doesn't even know it exists. So again we need to allow our git repository to recognize this PHP file that we just added within our project. And before we can commit anything we have to add what we want to commit. Okay, That's kind of confusing but the way that you can think of it is if we created a bunch of files here, let's say index.php, login.php, whatever else, we need to add what we want to commit into a big bucket. So anytime we add something with the command git add and then whatever we're adding, index.php, um, we're adding this file into our bucket before our bucket saves which will pour everything out and save it into one version of our project. Does that make sense? Um, you'll get it here after we work through a couple things. Um, so hopefully <laughs> that's not too confusing. Kind of a weird analogy but uh, we just need to add our changes before we save them or before we commit to them. So we do that with the command git add index. So we've learned three git commands already. Init, which initializes our project. Status, which will check the status of our project, which we can do again here. What's the status now? Well, it's pretty much still the same commit. We haven't committed anything yet. Um, but the changes that need be committed are now listed here. Now there is something that's actually going to be changed, which is index.php when we commit to a project. And the third command that we've learned is adding. Uh, to our bucket or whatever you guys want to think of. So the last thing that we have to do is to commit to our project. So we're going to say git commit and then we we'll just do a dash m and this will give us a note. Uh, this is basically just a small note that goes along with the commit. So we're going to say initialize project and simple uh, index page or something. Something basic just so we know what this commit did, what this change was. Just hit enter and it changed one file. So we've already learned how to commit to a project and before I wrap up this tutorial, there's probably going to be about three tutorials or four tutorials for this uh, GitHub series, mini series. Um, but before I end this lesson, I just want to say Git is different than GitHub. Git, you don't need any internet connection whatsoever. It doesn't have to con connect with a server. This is just your local repository on your system. So you can make a bunch of commits and a bunch of changes and then when we load it up to GitHub, later when we have internet access, because right now, uh, let's pretend we don't, when we load it up to GitHub, it will be able to recognize all of our changes and it will list those online as well. So other people can see what changes we made, then they can go back and download something that they want and work from there. 
Um, again, it still might be a little bit confusing as of now. Don't worry, guys. Uh, once we work through a few examples, you'll understand it and it'll be awesome. Again, the main things that we need to know, we need to initialize a project. Uh, so it has kind of the Git information built into our repository or a directory. And then once we do that, we're just gonna make our changes and then we have to add the changes that we wanna commit to. And then lastly, we just commit and leave a little comment so we know what we changed or what we saved. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. In the next tutorial, we're gonna kinda of learn about version control, adding a few different commits and being able to navigate backwards in time and change some things around. And make sure you check out the next tutorial because again, I know this probably is a little bit confusing as of right now, but uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll check you later. See ya.